Evening guys, how are we doing? Um, bear with me this evening, I'm not feeling 100%. In fact, this is the first time I got out of bed all day. That's just a lie. I got out of bed to uh, assist with the uh, training this morning, then I went back to bed, and I've just got out again now, because obviously the family needs to eat. So, um, right, we're going to crack, crack on with this. Oh, just broke my lid. We're going to crack on with this. Um, fairly quick and simple, guys. Um, there's a few additional things. Um, I, I wasn't really thinking that straight when I was writing up the, um, the recipe list. Uh, there's a few additional things that I'm going to use purely because when I've gone into the fridge, we've got them, all right? So the green salad leaves I've already got in the middle of the plate, as you can see there. Okay, I've gone with two red onions because one red onion is going to go into my salsa. The other red onion I'm going to put into my salad. Okay, and then I've got a lot, loads of carrots and I'm going to use it up, so I'm going to use a carrot. That's going to go in there. And then I've also got um, the basil that I used yesterday in the tapenade. So I want to get that used up so that can go into my salsa as well. Um, I still haven't got myself any black pepper, so I'm going to go with some salt and I'm going to go with a little bit of chili flakes for the, uh, for the chicken, just a little sprinting, just to give it a little bit of colour. Alright, and then um, what I've done now, and I did put this on the recipe list, um, additional if you wanted it. So if you wanted to keep this really low carb, okay, go with your chicken and your salsa. Really, really nice on a, on a nice hot day, I'd suggest. Um, However, if you want to get those carbs up a little bit, or if you know your carbs are a little bit low, or you know you've got a busy day tomorrow, you've got out doing a, a long ride or a long run or whatever, um, rice, or what I've gone for this evening, is some quinoa. And I've just got a load of um, chopped up olives and leftover sun-dried tomatoes from that happened on yesterday. So we've just chopped that up. That's all been cooked off, and it's just going to go in the oven. All right, so quinoa, you can, you can buy that stuff in packets. You can buy rice in packets. You can buy rice and quinoa mixed in packets. So lots of different things that you can do with that. Um, you could also add a little bit of potato to it, which sort of the kids have got. You might hear the oven humming behind, and I've popped them in some, just some potato wedges um, because they don't like the, the green leaves so much. All right, so let's get cracking. Let's get our oil into our pan. That's the first thing we're going to crack on with. So I've got my griddle pan again just to give myself some nice colours on these, on these chicken breasts. Uh, I'm going to butterfly these chicken breasts in a second. Hopefully we can get... Um, we can get all four of those in that pan. They might, they might be a little bit snug, but they'll be all right. Ah, so we're going to get all four of them in. The kitchen roll just to wipe that oil around that pan again in a second. Right, so hopefully you guys remember how we, how we butterfly by now, for those of you that have been following quite regularly. So all I'm going to do then, handle the top of the chicken breast. In fact, I'm just going to check it first, see if there's anything that needs to come off it. That's quite a nice looking chicken breast. So hand on top, and I'm just going to go down through the middle, just short at the end, so it opens right up. Okay, what I mean by a nice looking chicken breast is there's not too much crap on it, there's not too much um, sinew and cartilage and whatnot where it's come off the bone. Okay, there we go, number two. Okay, however, if you do get one, that one's got a little bit more of it. If you do get one, just take a little bit off. I'm looking at the wifey there. She likes to remove half the chicken breast when there's a little bit of stuff on it. Okay, just take, take a little bit off, guys. Don't go removing all your chicken breast because obviously that's all your goodness, that's all your protein. That's what you mean. Okay, other one then. Let's go down through this side. We've got three lovely this butterfly really nice today as well. Okay, so that one there, probably a little bit more than the other two. So all I'm gonna do is use the tip of the knife, just whip it off there. Okay, just cut through it there. Easy, that's gone. So nice tiny little bit. Nothing more needs to come off that, maybe that little bit there. I can see Hannah's looking at it. I'm not even looking at her and I can I can feel her eyes on that little piece of sinew. Saying, get out! There we go, that's all I need to do there, it's gone. Okay, so let's butterfly that one. Lovely. Okay, so butterfly, guys, it just makes the chicken breast um, appear that much bigger, it will cook that much quicker, and aesthetically, it just looks that much nicer, I think. Okay, let's move the oil around the pan then. But that is personal preference, like most cooking, guys. So there's been lots of comments from the guys following our recipes on Plan X. Um, some are going down really well, some not so well. Cottage cheese seems to be a bit of a bugbear for people at the minute. Uh, some people are saying about steaming the meatballs. Guys, it's very much a personal preference. Um, you know, if you want to grill, you won't change, you, you won't really change the, the nutritional content um, of something unless you're frying it in loads of oil. Right? So if you are pan frying it here now. I'm not going to change the nutritional content of that very much. I'm going to go for another pan. Um, because I'm not using that much oil yet, so if I was to chuck it in the grill. So equally, yeah, obviously it's a little bit boring for you guys 
uh, was one doing a cooking demo and everything was in a grill. That just means I'm studying and waiting for it all to cook. Uh, but equally, nutritionally, you're not going to change the value of it a great deal uh, okay, by using uh, the pan, the oven, uh, a George Foreman, steaming it. Are you talking more about meat now as opposed to talk vegetables? About, talk about meat, yeah. So yeah. To, 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 to maintain, again, you're not going to change the nutritional content of the vegetables, um, more so how much um, of the goodness it's got in them. So calorie-wise, calories and carbohydrates, you're not going to change massively um, by changing how you're doing it. Yeah? So whether it goes in the oven, goes in a steamer, boils it. However... Steaming it is probably the best way, or stir frying it is the best way to maintain all the goodness and the nutrients in those vegetables. Going back to meat, yeah, obviously if I'm frying that in an inch full of oil, I'm going, you know, I'm going to change the nutritional content of it because I don't have that much oil in it. But we're using what? A tablespoon of oil in each of those, and actually half of that will be gone come the end of it. It's just literally, because um, this, this has come up a few times now actually about oils and whatnot, it's just literally stop it from sticking to the pan. And the coconut oil is actually full of something, you might have heard me say this before, full of something called conjugated linoleic acid. Now, I got that out the first time. Um, which you can actually buy from most, most health food shops, and they promote it as uh, it's in like soft gel capsules, um, almost like, like how you get um, cod liver oil. Um, and basically, it's promoted as a fat burner, because yeah, it's, it's a good fat that helps burn fat. Now, we need a certain amount of fat in our diets to burn fat. Right? If you try to restrict fat too much, you will inhibit, and it's not to say that you won't burn fat, but you will inhibit the fat loss process by not consuming enough. Ooh, we've got all the technical there, haven't we? Anyway, any more questions? <laughs> right, no. so what I did forget to do, because I'm just not willing to do them, is I forgot to season it before it went in. So <laughs> what I'll do now is I will season the top side so when it goes over, that will be the side that we preserve, the side that we finish with. So I should have done that before it went in. So I got carried away talking about oil. Okay, a little sprinkle with chili flakes. Obviously if you want it you know, nice and spicy, you'll go with a little bit more. However, you're gonna get a nice bit of spice out of this salsa anyway. Really, really, this, this is the bit that makes this meal actually, actually guys. The chicken um, will just do its own thing here now. Um, the, the real flavour comes from what we're about to create over here. So we'll pop that to one side, pop that to one side, we'll finish our salad in a minute. Let's get our tomatoes going. So nice on the vine tomatoes. Get rid of the vine, we don't want that. Okay, I'm going to use a filleting knife now, which some of you might look at and go, what are you doing using that? I'm not using fish. However, I just find it nice and easy to take the guts of the tomato out. So that's why I kept my little plastic pot. Okay, so I'm going to go down through the middle, quarter it, okay, and I'm just going to follow the bottom end, so away from the root end. Okay, I'm just going to follow that, okay, and take out most of the middle. Listen, I'm not going to be anal about it. If there's a little bit left in there, no biggie. However, if that all stays in there, um, a, we can't um, digest that, it's very good as roughage and fibre, but we can't digest it, and also it uh, makes the salsa too watery, yeah, because obviously that's where all, I say obviously, you might not know, but that's where all the water and that sits. Okay, so I'm just using the tip of the knife to take the inner side. That one's gone out for some reason. Bit. That one's gone out. Oh, he's gone out, is he? Yeah. Let's relight it. Yeah, that's going to take me down to about a six, guys. It's just above a medium heat. Okay, so I've got, I've got four tomatoes. My recipe said six. Why have I got four tomatoes, huh? Because our daughter ate the other two for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> We've encouraged her to start making her own lunch, which is very good. And she, she is cracking on and doing it. And she does tend to make some healthy um, decisions. However... On the other occasion, she does also tend to use the ingredients that I need for dinner. Unknowingly, <laughs> Unknowingly to be fair. Yeah. She's not that kind of daughter, are you? <laughs> However, broken on the other hand, would eat it purposely. Excuse me? Yes, excuse me. Uh, now, if I called him to do something, he wouldn't have heard me say his name then. <laughs> right, so I've got some four tomatoes. Uh, I thought it would be enough. 
Um, I would have gone for six, but it'll be, it'll be enough because I'm adding those extra little bits in the end anyway. Um, so the oil I've got there tonight, I'm just put a hand on that actually. The oil, um, oil a normal olive oil is fine. Um, however, I had a look at my cupboard there just a minute ago and I've got a nice garlic infused oil. So I'm going to use that because that'll just give that this um, a little bit more flavour. So if you've got a chili oil or basil oil, garlic oil, get a flavour in there. When we were in um, Mexico back in 2006, um, I would literally eat this this particular um, salsa every morning with whatever breakfast I was having, and it was always had loads of it chopped up just in the same way I'm going to do it now. So not done in the blender. In a blender, it's all just going to go into a mush. You know, like the old El Paso stuff you get out of the jar. Um, whereas this is just really good, so it's nice and fresh. Lovely. Okay. We'll do, we'll do that. Come this way. So it's going to get rid of my seeds and juice that goes into that pot. We'll keep that pot back and we can put our own stuff on our, our uh, lemon and our onion in a minute. Okay, so just nice fingers of it. Go down, nice dice, right through. Nice little squares, right? So tiny little squares of tomato. So we'll get through all this tomato and then we'll have a look at that chicken. We'll strip it over and change it over. Flip it over and I'll get there in a minute. Back to our wedding, we had a banana salsa, didn't we? Remember that? Yeah, what was that? Was that with chicken? So I'm trying to remember. Chicken. Yeah. We freaked a few people out by opting for a beetroot ice cream on top of a steak. <laughs> In fact, I think, well, I don't think I can say the words my nan said live on the camera, but <laughs> she wanted to know what this ice cream was doing on her steak. <laughs> To be fair, it was, when we went down and tasted it, it was fantastic. However, if they hadn't thought through, it was the volume of people that needed to be served and getting those, all that steak out, keeping it hot, whilst they had an ice cream on top of it. <laughs> okay, guys, Working through just short of halfway on my tomatoes. Don't rush it, you have to make sure you get nice cubes on it all. Now I'm going to get enough, myself a nice big silver bowl. Doesn't have to be so you just want a nice big bowl in a minute. And we're going to start combining all this together. And we're really going to work the knife through all these ingredients. Any questions so far, guys? No, no questions. Lots of people watching, but no questions. Yeah, not until my tomatoes are finished. I hope you're listening, audience, because I said this just a second ago. Which means I need to get quicker on my tomatoes. Whoop! Lost a bit. Oh, what's going on here? I know why I've gone ill today. The sun's gone. The sun was still out. I've been fine. The risk of sounding like my dad. We needed that rain, didn't we? <laughs> Here they are. It's cleaned our tiles nicely. Cleaned our tiles nicely. They are still wet, though. If they dry, we need to make sure they're nice and clean. Okay guys, so four more bits of tomato to do. I would suggest that's one whole tomato. Hasn't done the gym mats any favours though, has it? No. No, they were supposed to have gone in, but we forgot about that. 
Hey ho. I think it's due to be a bit nicer again tomorrow. Not as warm as it's been the last couple of days, but I think it's uh, coming back a bit better than it has been. Coochie, it's probably snowing where you are if you're watching, mate. Tracy Macbeth, if she's watching, Scott, one of our Scottish viewers. I haven't seen her name tonight, yeah, actually. That's a lovely, lovely message the other day, actually. It was really, really nice of her. Okay, first one, first then. Just let that go. Let's split these chicken breasts. Cool, over they go. Lovely. At all, don't put any chilli in. Salsa is a tad supposed to be a spicy dish, however, if you don't like it, just go with the onions and tomatoes and coriander, a bit of lime, but a bit of. Uh, Still be really tasty without it. Really tasty, it? it's just not gonna, not, you're just not gonna have the heat. Again, personal preference, guys. Don't let anyone tell you something should be done a certain way. Unless it's a pasty, don't mess with a pasty, alright? Lime a little roll. Okay, let's just pop that one in half. Let's squeeze our lime juice in. So I'm roughly we're gonna go with, remember, a third lime, two thirds oil, like we did with the dressings. Right, you always want to go twice the amount, oh, let's get that one back out, twice the amount 
of oil to acidic. Yeah, if you're not sure on the measurements, would you, you have put that jug. in a jug first? Yeah. yeah. So the other day, so what I did this one, I got about 25 ml of lime juice. So I'm looking at about 50 ml of oil. Yeah, I'm not going to put the oil in yet, so I'm going to pop those two bits to one side. Okay, I'm going to pull that. I'm going to get my coriander chopped off, and then I'm going to pull that back out, put it on top. I'm going to blitz it all down through together. So, stalks, leaves, everything, good handful, good bunch of coriander. Okay, I'm also going to use that basil that I've got left over, so just roll that up. Okay, use your fingernails. Make sure you get rid of any big stalky bits, you don't want that. In the middle, lovely, and uh, what was like this? Yeah, so, oh, so basil, so leftover basil. Yeah, basil goes really quick though, so the stuff you could use it in, use it up. So I'm, I'm going to use up a little bit because that'll be gone by tomorrow, but I'm going to use a little bit of that tomorrow also in our salmon dish. Okay, so chop that up nice and small as well, mix that in. Those, oh, I mean, that is smelling the basil and that coriander together, just smelling awesome. Okay, so I'm going to make a nice little bed of that. Okay, then I'm going to bring, bring its mates out. We're all going to come up the plate. Okay. I do tend to lose a little bit here. But it's fine, we've got a good cleaner. Okay, so just going to dice that down through. I thought you were giving me the bird then, you were just changing hands. <laughs> okay, so keep working that away, guys. So I'm just going to tip fingers down on the knife, Look, just using the heel of the knife. And we're just trying to really combine these flavours now, so I'm just chopping them into each other. In fact, I did 15 meals for an old boot neck friend of mine called Nichols the other day for a bit of business conference he had in the pillar. And I did this exactly the same salsa for them. Um, we served it with tuna and couscous. Really nice fresh. Went down a storm. Went down a storm. They, uh, they all really enjoyed that. It's exactly the same process, guys. If you're ever having friends around and you're doing the heaters, well, I really suggest okay, do your own salsa, do your own guacamole. It will make such a difference um, to how they normally have the heaters. You know, you know, normally they maybe have used the, the old El Paso jars or some squeezy bottle of guacamole. That will survive the apocalypse um, and yeah this is just a really really if you can do your own salsa and do your own guacamole your dinner guests will really really make a difference hold it right there so you can see that uh, we're going to change the cameraman oh my god apologies guys you could be filming watching anything now hold, hold both hands <laughs> make sure you can see daddy through the screen Will it? Hello. Huh. Lee Couch is watching. Is he really? What's yeah. he have to say then, Brody? No, he doesn't say anything. Is he not? No. Do you know he's a Liverpool fan? No. He is. He's, no. He's a Liverpool fan. And Daddy visited him, him in Australia and in Sydney. Thank you, darling. Neil Madova says good stuff to me. Good stuff. Thank you, Neil Madova. Neil Madova used to live down the lane from me in Cornwall. Cool. Yeah, he had a really big rope swing. Okay. okay, guys. So this is probably the most tedious bit is getting all the getting the salsa prep. But the whole time, look, your chicken's just cooking away. Oh, it's making me up and down actually. <laughs> It'll turn us over. I'm not doing anything for that. I'll add it to my list of ailments, hands, eh? Might as apart. well. All in a pot. Okay, so through half of it, this really does make a difference though guys, just really getting these flavours combined like this and just chopping any of those little bits that you might have missed, tomato or onion you might have missed, um, stalks of coriander that you might have missed, just really yeah, it gets all those kind of bits blitzed up so you'll, you lose any big chunky bits. Okay, now I haven't lost too much tonight. I'll speak too soon, but normally I have a 
few room bits of scrap wood going on. Okay, so we're not far from it. Okay, we're going to add our oil to our salsa. Oh, Would you like to pass me the spatula and I shall flip this spatula, chicken? I'd rather you didn't flip the chicken, thank you very much, because the chicken has already been flipped once. Guys, remember that's a good point from Hannah. Well, a mistaken point, but a good point for you to all to know. Remember, when you're using a griddle pan, you only turn it once, okay? Because what will happen is you will start confusing the lines. You'll never put it down in the same place again, and all the lines will just be all over the place. Same with your, um, your steak, guys. Yeah, it should only to really turn your steak and chicken once. Um, I know that that's absolutely fine there. I'm happy with what it's doing. I want it to be a little bit charred on the outside. Okay. We're almost there. Lovely. Okay, so those flavours all nicely combined, looking good. Okay, so that's really that nice. So still the red is the main colour in that. Let's not lose any of those lime juices in it. Make sure that all goes back in. Woohoo! Let's go, and in you go. Lovely. Okay, just going to wipe the knife, make sure we get all those nice little bits in there. Okay, now oil. Okay, garlic oil, it's got loads of bits of garlic at the bottom, so I'm going to shake it up, wake it up. Okay, a little bit of oil into there. Okay, last thing I'm going to go with then is some salt. Okay, that's really going to pop those flavours out. Now, if I had the time, yeah, I'd leave that in the fridge, and that would really start looking really good in the fridge, all right? Okay, so all I am going to do now, though, is take... Excuse <coughs> me. The, uh, there we go, look at that. Perfect, so I'm going to reduce it all down to one pan. Okay, turn it down to about a six. Chuck you in now. Okay. So let's get us, get us a spoon. Let's combine those flavours. And we're just going to finish off our salad. Brody. Oh, Can you come and lay the table, please, that is bud? Absolutely fantastic, guys. So I'm going to put my quinoa. So remember, I did my quinoa with a bit of sunburned tomatoes. And uh, leftover olives. Right, so you just boil that up like you would. In fact, you get it in a packet like you would do rice and whatnot. So follow the instructions on the back of the packet, and then just add some flavours into it. Like we've done with couscous on this on this um, demo before. Hungry baby. Moroccan spices and things like that um, are really good. Um, coriander and lime. Yeah, that's really good into a into a couscous or a quinoa. Okay. Cheers, buddy. Right. So what I'm going to do. Next, good, 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 never ever find a good one, good one, good one always goes, I'm going to spoil that bad one. Okay guys, what I'm going to do is take off the skin of my carrot, what we need is we just got to bring in, skin of my carrot, okay, now I'm going to use, <coughs> excuse me, use my carrot there, let's be peel that over the top. So a nice, loose couple of bits of carrot. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, did I lose it? Yeah. Love it. Oh, did I lose it? Okay, guys, what we're going to do with that then? Take the head off, take the tip off, half it. Just going to do some carrot sticks for the kids. And we'll put them to one side. Lovely, and a bit, little bit of red onion. Probably only going to use half of it, guys. We've already got red onion in the actual salsa. It's just to make the salad not look so sorry for itself. Looking a bit glum at the minute. So pop that one over there. Okay, just nice. Thin slices. Red onions. Drop that. Around the salad plate. And the same over on this one. 
dressing for this salad guys because all that flavour and all that moisture is going to come from the salsa. Okay, a couple of olives. Okay, so I'm going to go with a little bit of quinoa. Like I said, if you didn't want to guys, if you wanted to keep this just really low carb, okay, you can simply just go with the salad. I'm just going to go with a little bit. Yeah, about only about 50 to 100 grams, not loads. Okay, so I'm going to do the same on that side. That one's a lot. side and two cool guys there you go so nice really nice fresh quick easy well I say quick easy what was it 30 minutes 30 minutes guys so it takes as long as it takes the, the chicken breast really it's quite labour inducing with the with the salsa but it is worth it alright so if you if you're doing a barbecue or if you're doing like I said got friends coming around for dinner and you're doing fajitas or any sort of Mexican dish I would really suggest that as a side that salsa, everyone will say every time, wow, that's amazing. Um, like I said, with a barbecue or something, just in a nice bowl to one side, really, really cool. Okay, guys, I um, hope you enjoyed that. Hopefully, I'll be back 100% my normal self tomorrow. We've got um, shoulders and legs in the morning. Um, I'm going to go back to my bed, I think. Um, and then tomorrow evening, we have, yes, oh, yeah, okay, so, but the bread lovers. We haven't really done anything with bread. Uh, and tomorrow night I'm going to do a nice ciabatta bread. I'm going to kind of fry ciabatta bread um, base down, and then we're going to serve it with salmon on top, a really nice kind of spicy tomato sauce with mozzarella oozing over the top. Lovely. Take it easy, guys. Have a nice night.